make it back into town. And it's just after five o'clock. Five o'clock. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we should go back to the inn and formulate what we're going to do tonight. Yeah, hopefully there's a message. And I'll go back to the inn, see if there's a uh, message from Betty. Uh, uh, hey, boys, boys, there's a, there's a message for you from uh, someone named Betty. Uh, telegram. Oh, what's it say? Can I have it? He hands it to you. And what you read is, Hey, hotness. I love the husk of your voice embracing my ear. The disc was sold. It's still in state. Some guy named Armitage. Hmm. Love, Betty. Well, that's not coming back this scenario. <laughs> we don't know about him. No, we your don't. uncle worked. Your uncle worked for. Him. Uh, actually, I do. Yeah, I would know actually because he's my you uncle's boss. Um, can do you mind if I borrow your phone? <laughs> I mean, you got one in your room. You paid for that one. Very true. Uh, and I run up. I run up back to our room uh, to go use the phone. Sure. Uh, good old Murph. Make a constitution check. Yeah. Uh, 55. Barely passed, but passed. Barely passed. Your right eye. Just you keep getting a sharp pain. <clears throat> but then you're fine. Yeah. It's, prob it's probably, probably okay. It's just the eye worm holes. It's the, you know, it's like an arrow. If you leave it in, it doesn't hurt as much. And you take it out, it hurts a lot. Same thing for eye worm. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, All I right. Say this out loud. This is my inner justification. You have your, you're in your room. Yeah. So I immediately pick up the phone and try to start dialing. Uh, I don't think you have their number, but you probably have the number to uh, Mr. Tonic University. Oh yeah, that works too. Yeah, I'll call them. I work at Orn Library too, so I would sort of know Armitage. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll call them up. Phone rings. And rings. And rings. Hello, Miss Katonic University. Hi there. Um, this is this is Sebastian. Sebastian Good Sir. I was wondering if I can get in touch with uh, Henry Armitage. Oh, uh, uh, of course. I I could leave him a message. Uh, is he is he in the office? The 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 matter is rather urgent. Oh no, it's Saturday. Damn it. Uh, do you have a direct line to him that I can call? No, I have a number to his office. Uh, look, I'm a student worker here. Um, that is. Can I leave a message? That is fine. Yes, uh, I will leave a message. I would, I would like him to see if he can bring uh, the 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 Hawthorne's disc back to Danvers University as soon as he can. And and uh, and write urgent on it as many times as you can. Um, okay. Uh, may I ask who's calling? This is Sebastian, good sir. He know he knows me. Okay, Mister Sebastian, good sir. Okay, I I'll leave the message on his desk. Um, it, it is fall break, right now, so uh, he wouldn't get back to it to, uh, maybe over a week from now. Still, but, uh, I'll be still sure better than it. nothing, I suppose. Thank you so much. I okay. hang up. Have, have, have a good day. Oh, uh, yeah. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll a sanity check for me. Uh, 21, I got it. Great. Roll a power check for mm. me. Uh, 30, got it. Great. You hear a voice in your head. What is he doing? Is he trying to sabotage this whole thing? Your friend? Murphy? But no. No, he wouldn't sabotage this. He cares about you. Right? Hmm. Did he even have eye worms? <laughs> I'm back. Yeah? Sorry. Yeah, you are back. <laughs> great, great. Things happened while you were gone. It's fine. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Sure, I great. guess you run up the stairs and meet me after I've done the call. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I 
I go, I hang, as I'm hanging up the phone, I go, uh, unfortunately Armitage is out on fall break. I left a message to tell him to return the disc of Hawthorne to Danvers as soon as he could, but I fear it won't be here fast enough. But I've you know, done all I can. Say, yeah, I mean, even worst case scenario, at least it gets here sometime. Yeah. And hopefully that'll be better than nothing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I suppose we should prepare ourselves for tonight, then. Yeah. So what time do you want to leave? Anything else you want to prepare? Uh, I guess we just have our crowbar and our chains, because we can't get anything else in town. Uh, uh keep the I'll keep the kerosene in the car when we go. Yeah, and then we'll drive up at around 9. Okay. You So you leave at 9, which gets you there quarter to 10. Yes. Right? Great. We park far enough away that they don't see us in the parking lot or anything like that. Okay, okay, so let's say, since it's, so, the way Danvers is set up, it's on a hill, and it's one long road that leads up there. Hmm. So where where are you going to turn off, or... I guess we park our car, car? kind of where my car crashed, remember? And then we walk the rest of the way. Sure, you can't really do that, because oh. you get to the gates of Danvers and the gates are closed and go ahead and make a spot hidden check both of you at half because okay. it's dark outside Ooh. and also yeah. no one has binoculars because we, we never got to bring flashlights to what it. about our what about our night vision goggles could, I could have bought a lot better things at that store I guess <laughs> a I lot a, better I got a seven so I actually got it. Oh, that's really, I failed even a regular roll. That's because I have these bifocals. <laughs> you can see through the gate as you pull up, as you get closer, you can see all the guards on the ground. Huh? And there's quite a few of them, probably 15. And you see them locking the gate. You said they're on the, oh, like they're patrolling. Yep. Oh. Hmm. It doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna put you at closer to 10:30. Yeah, that's fine. That's fair. Okay. So there you are on the side of the wall hmm. at the gate of Danvers. How tall is the wall? Oh, probably about 12 feet. 12 feet. Does it have like spikes or anything on the top? Oh yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Does it look climbable? For who? Uh, both of us, I guess. I mean, we both gotta get over there. Uh, how, what are your, what's your skill at climbing? Not good. <laughs> Not great. Maybe we can... What, a, what about a, what about a throw? <laughs> <laughs> no. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, my throw skill is excellent. <laughs> I mean, you could perceive how to possibly climb it, if you want to roll for me. Um, Go ahead. Or... What's the... Both of you, for the sake of, both of you roll a climb check. Is there any part of the gate that looks like we can cut it with the wire cutters? Because I have those. Hmm. Uh, what did you do for the climb check first? Oh, I'll fail. give you a better hard, idea. Hard fail. I hard got a fail. 69. I got a 76. Yeah. Uh, I failed. Not only do you not really see how you could climb it, you both think you would die at the top. Yeah. <laughs> those are sharp spikes. Well, we Is have... there a place where you could cut in with those wire cutters? Go ahead and make me... Hmm... Roll for me... An intelligence check. Ooh. Magic check. 22, I got it. So, Danvers, at least the older part of it, it's obviously all built with hard steel and iron and sharp and and brick. There's no cutting through that. But you do recall there was a new amphitheater built. Maybe by there they don't have this old style construction. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess we'll walk along the fence to try and get over there. Uh, I, I know, I, I think I sent you a map before. I gave you an idea. It's pretty far. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but if that's where we gotta go, then that's where we gotta sure. go. It's it's gonna take ah oh gosh how long are gonna take you I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another ten thirty I'm gonna give it another forty five minutes so it's eleven thirty by the time you get there uh, as and we're indeed, trudging through the way I just turned them up well this is why I wanted to get there at ten <laughs> yep smart, smart. good call 
Oh, uh, you get there and it is indeed a chain link fence. Yes. Murph, hand me the okay. wire, the bolt cutters. Right. I'm gonna try it. And I would I... recommend making a spot hidden check. Oh, okay. Both of you. Getting a little hasty cutting those that Three. fence open. Six. No, we wasted our good rolls. I'm looking through a chain link fence. <laughs> well, it wasn't that. You find the chain link fence easy. As you look to the amphitheater, the reservoir is across. So here, you're at the fence, then there's the amphitheater, and past that is the reservoir. Where the water is by the amphitheater. There are torches surrounding the amphitheater. It's well lit. Um, you can see all the orderlies have left the grounds. And in fact, everyone is at the amphitheater. Well, now I feel is... a bit silly. <laughs> Is the is the reservoir is that a t is it like within the asylum or is it outside the asylum? Uh, it's within the asylum's grounds. Okay, so it is like fenced off and everything. Well, it's part as you cut open this fenced in area, you would go over there, but it's not like like the reservoir is like a it's almost like a lake on the asylum. I don't uh, think they would bother to fence it off. Well, we got through. Okay, cheers. Oh yeah, you want you want to cut in? Yeah, cut in. Roll dexterity. Probably should have had Murph do this, but that's fine. Twenty-one. Okay, yeah. Thanks for all the good rolls. Now, Two, sorry, Luna. <laughs> yeah. You cut it open. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Poor Luna's. Yeah. Uh, and just to keep in mind, you're probably a hundred feet away from the bodies and the people moving around in the action. Yeah, so I'm. Uh, I guess we're gonna try and stealth our way through. Roll me some stealth, boys. Guess what I don't have. Uh, guess what I also don't have. As we, uh, but as we walk in, oh, ten. I, I got it. <laughs> good. I'm, I I don't see this working for me too. Um, I am going to pop open the can, and the kerosene, and start leaving a trail behind us as we walk oh. in. That. Uh, I'm gonna spend the luck. I'm going to spend the four luck to make it. Oh, nice. Perfect. I I would have recommended such a task. Good. Yeah, you make it in, and you're you're quiet, even though you've snipped the wires of a chain link fence, and you've managed to squeeze your way through and kept it relatively quiet. Now you're at, you're inside the grounds at Danvers. So what exactly do we see going on in the circle uh, of, like, uh, torch lights and stuff? Well, what a good question. What you do see, so you're at the side of the amphitheater, so you can't see where it's cut off by stone. You only really see the path that leads from Danvers State Asylum to the amphitheater, hmm. where you see it's lit with torches, and you see everyone's coming out of the hospital. One at a time, a lot of people. Patients, orderlies, pretty much everybody. And eventually a man on a dolly is being pushed through the crowd. It's our friend. <laughs> it's our guy. It's our guy. It's our friend. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and as you step in, go ahead and both of you make a sanity roll. It's getting harder to do. 96, yeah, I failed. I would have failed in the. I would have succeeded in the beginning with that sixty, but now I'm. I'm. That's a failure. No, I failed as oh. hard as you can. <laughs> you both take two sanity damage. Nice. There's something. As soon as you step through this chain link fence and you were on the grounds, you felt a chill overcome you. You felt every eye looking upon you, but no one's looking at you. You feel this un this general unease. You feel something stirring within you, especially you, Murphy. Especially oh. on the right side of your head. Oh, as you touch the right side of your head, yeah. right by your eye, uh, you feel this large... It feels like a lump, but it's about the thickness of... A cord like an auxiliary cable, about that wide, oh, going God. this way and wiggling all the way to your ear. No. No. <laughs> uh, probably not the time, the place. Do you, you got that tweet? You don't have the tweezers. Oh, I'm, I'm in front of you, so I don't see any of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm whispering to myself. Yeah. 
Mm, I don't have. Do yeah, we? Oh, sorry. Do we see our my uncle? Our uncle? <laughs> do I? Uh, do we see uh, my uncle anywhere in the crowd? Uh, that's going to uh, the amphitheater. You'll have, you'll have to move to get a better vantage point if you want to look into the amphitheater. I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can blend in with the crowd and sneak in that way, Murph. What do you think? I I say over my shoulder, but not <laughs> looking at Murphy, not seeing I'm his predicament. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to like squeeze, <laughs> squeeze the eye worm. <laughs> this is the most body horror we've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can push it. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. You, you poke it. It's it it colla kind of collapses it in, then refills the area. It's very it's the worst. Flexible. Yep. <laughs> Great. I'm gonna keep going. Just don't have anything else to do really. Milk it out of your eye. <laughs> 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 nope, 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 nope. Oh god, it's the worst. <laughs> um okay. What do you do? I think it's I... it's about eleven uh, I'd say eleven fifty. On the, yeah, you got there at 11.30, 11.50. You were trying to be quiet, and you stealthily got through the fence. I'm assuming I ditched the wire cutters, but now I have my crowbar as, like, a weapon. Um, is there any is there any way we think we can get closer without anyone seeing us? Oh, yeah. You can definitely get closer without anyone seeing you. Based off your stealth rolls, you could do it. Yeah, I'd like to get a little closer, see if we can see, like, behind where the amphitheater is, where they're going. Yeah. Moving a little bit oh, closer. so you want to see where they're going? So you're going to, you would hug the fence to the right, and you would go around, and you'd actually get close to the entrance where people are walking out of Danvers into it. Sure. But there's a little alcove over there you could certainly hide in. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's try that. Yeah. So you kind of hide near the entrance, but no one opens a door and then looks around the corner to their left. Yeah. They yeah. just walk straight out, and you see an amphitheater. That's just filled with people. People, and it's it's a couple, it's probably like five or six different levels high, and every patient, everyone's in there, and everyone's staring towards the center. And in the center, you see a cloaked figure wearing a hideous mask that's all deformed. It reminds you of the face of Hank and Frank. It's just bubbled in weird places. It's got a snarl to it. And he's standing there, uh, presiding over a table. A big stone altar. Huh. What is this, Murph? What's going on here? It looks bad. It looks real bad. Do you see my uncle anywhere in the crowd? Can we? Make a spot hidden roll. That's I got, uh, I'm going to spend the six so that I get it. I got a 15. Which puts me at 40. <laughs> uh, so you got it, you... Don't find your uncle, but you could kind of tell by the body shape from what you remember. That cloaked figure with the mask. Pretty sure that's Dr. Berger. Mm. What is and that? as as you notice that, the door opens. And it's about 11.59. And out wheeled on top of a girl is your Uncle Larry. Being pushed by another orderly. Hank and Frank are waiting. And when orderly pushes it, Hank and Frank walk along the side of this gurney as it approaches the center. And again, the center, you see torches along the wall. There's a general darkness to the area. Everyone's looking down at the stone altar. Uh, and in your spot hidden roll, something else caught your eye was the sheen on the water of the reservoir. It's that same gray, silky kind of color. But every once in a while, you see a ripple. Hmm. Murph, we gotta, we gotta stop him. What do you, what do you think we should do? You're so your his uncle's like right close to us, or a little bit away. No, at this point, he's almost he's pretty much at the table. Oh, okay, okay. So he was being Hank, rolled up. I see what you're saying. Yeah, he's yeah. being rolled out. Hank and Frank yeah, were yeah, like yeah. just probably gotcha, gotcha. Hank and Frank was probably about they were probably 10, 12 feet away from you guys. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. We need to we need to get in there. We need to stop them. Dr. Uh, Berger raises his hands and begins chanting in a language you can't understand. What the what is that? And I know languages, so I I'm sure I've never heard it before, right? <laughs> nope. You notice that it's dead silent as he chants. No one moves a muscle. Everyone's I'm... hands are down. 
and yep. they're focused on the center. Murph, we gotta get in there. I'm gonna be I, reckless. I'm just. I can cause, okay. I can what? cause a distraction real quick. And why don't you run in there? Uh, that's uh, yeah. I'm about to go, and you okay. say that, and I go. Give me your tie. Give Murph, me your tie. Are you sure? And I give yeah. him my tie. Well, I, my tie's on the ground, but I give it to him. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Just go. Uh, okay. Uh, I wait for you to make the distraction, okay. and then I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna put the. Uh, I'm gonna shove the tie into the rest of the kerosene. And uh, light it and try to throw it at Hank and Frank. Before you get a chance, to... Doctor Berger, midnight, drops his hands. Silence stands there, and then you hear the patients, the doctors, the nurses, the orderlies, howl, scream with joy, and there's an eruption of violence. Eruption. We're talking. People are tearing off each other's ears. They're punching each other in the face. They're they're scrab they're scabbing each other. They're 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 taking out shivs, stabbing one another. And where you think you'd hear screams of pain and violence, you hear shouts of joy, laughter, orgasms. <laughs> As people just relish in the heat. Of destruction. Well, that looks like an opening. Uh, you got, so, do you still throw that at Frank and Hank? Yep, you're what? still welcome to. Great, go ahead and make what? a throw check! Yes! <laughs> That's a 26 out of 60. Great, you can really, they're not shoulder to shoulder, they're on, they're, they're pretty far in there too, so you kind of have to run up and do it. Yeah, well now we don't really care table. about being stealthy if everyone's too busy beating the hell out of each other. You really only have a chance to throw it at one. You want Hank or Frank? Uh, let's throw it at Hank. Let's throw it at Hank, alright. So you, you hit Frank in the back with this giant thing of kerosene. Not terribly hard to hit, uh, and it erupts in flames. Because of his hard body, it just, the whole can explodes all over him. And he screams, which you haven't heard. And as he opens his mouth, you can see he doesn't have a tongue. He goes, ah! and then you hear, ah! <laughs> and he then, on fire, runs back into the crowd, starts throwing his body at people. Ty, go ahead and make a luck roll. That's very. That's a four, and it's a four. Hell yeah! You see, uh, inmates run up at you on all fours, and one takes a leap at you. You take that fistful of chain, you pop him one. And he goes down like a sack of bricks. You don't even have to roll damage. Just down, but with a smile on his face. I'm gonna go, book it go towards get him, my man. uncle. Yeah. Go get him! And I have my crowbar uh, in hand to, to bat at people as they as they try to get at me. Great, go ahead and make a luck roll. Alright. You know who's been spending a lot of luck? <laughs> 21! Ooh, thank god I got it. I have a 40. So I, You passed? <laughs> yeah, just... I'm getting low, but I pass. <laughs> One nurse runs at you with a syringe, and you manage to see it in time, and she, you hit her syringe in hand across the face with a crowbar. You got to be able to make it to your uncle, but there's violence surrounding him. We're talking an orgy of destruction, violence, and terror. And you'll have to literally fight through it. Yep, I'm gonna, I gotta, I have to do it. Okay, go ahead, Murphy, you're up. Uh, seeing how much of a chaos is on stage, I will try to run up and help them, I guess. Well, yeah. Well, good idea. Make a luck roll. Barely. 30 out of 32. You pass? So, yeah. two inmates run up to you. Uh, one on all fours, and the other one, uh, it's the finger in the butt guy. And he no. runs up to you. His finger's still in his butt. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> and We're he's dead. holding his finger out to you. And he's and uh, you managed to knock them both out of the way and continue forward and progress. Go ahead and make a constitution check for me. We were his friend. He appreciated that I appreciated him. <laughs> at disadvantage, sorry, at half. That is still fine. That is a seven. Oh. Feel a sharp pain in your head, but then you just shake it off. In the heat of the violence, you love violence, you're a boxer. Okay. Are you yeah. caught up to Go me? Ahead. Is he caught up to me at no. least now? Uh, he, he, he's caught up to you, yes. Okay, okay so we're together gone. at least. Well, unless you continue to progress forward. Well, I he's will. He's probably like two or three oh, bodies behind you. So he's like, uh, so basically I'm, I'm 
think of think of it kind of like a chase scene. Yeah, that you're, makes sense. You're fighting your way through. You're a little bit further ahead than he is. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Obviously, I'm not gonna. I I can't stop for Murphy because I don't even know what's what his situation is because that's how blind I'm trying to just get to my uncle. Go ahead and make a strength roll this time. Ooh. Ooh, this is low. Why is the librarian leading the charge? You're in the heat of it. Ooh, 18 out of 30, though. That is not... It's just a normal pass. A normal pass, yeah. People are fighting up to you, but thank goodness it's the tiny ones. Yeah, and, and you're I have a crowbar. Kind of stomp them out of the way, and you're hitting them with a crowbar, exactly. I mean, you hit a guy, but the problem is you're, you're swinging it both ways. You don't know how to swing it, and you actually hook a guy right ah. across the eye and rip the bridge of his nose off. I don't have time to smile, process it. And he takes the blood and he drinks from it. Ah, he says, thank you. It's worse that he liked it. <laughs> All right, Murphy, you're up. I'll just keep going, trying to run up with him. Go ahead and make a strength check this time. I will spend seven luck to do it. Mm. Luck's getting real low. <laughs> yep, same thing. Uh, you're going up there, and it's some of the bigger orderlies, but you're kind of excited for it. And you're a little <laughs> disappointed at how little fight they put up. But we're talking, there's there's blood. A lot of them are already pretty beat up. And chains on. You pop them a few times. No problem. I had these Sebastian. boys in the ring. No problem. <laughs> Sebastian, you're up. All right. How close am I? Uh, you're a lot closer now. Uh, I guess because the uh, Dr. Berger's still... Right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna yep. try and... You, you think... Well, go ahead and make a dexterity check. This one I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. Better at least than the other two things. Seven. Yeah. Zero, zero, and then a seven. Seven. You squeeze. You see people are fighting all around you, and you kind of duck underneath a couple punches, and you manage to squeeze your way through. But you're stepping on a few people and, and bodies on the ground as you do it. I can't even notice. Some of them, some of them yell back in protest. Some of them don't. Uh, am I close enough to Dr. Berger to clock him? Not yet. Uh, Murphy, yeah. you're up. Same thing, I'll just keep running towards you. Go ahead and make a dexterity check. Fortunately, we don't have anything else to like throw or anything. Okay, yeah, 48, 48, I got it. 48, yep, same thing. The, the closer you get to the center, the thicker the, the mess seems to be the more people there are, the more bodies are piled up, the more people are screaming, people holding their crotches again in orgasm and ecstasy, loving the violence. I'm glad that we got to the point where you're telling us what happens to everyone's boners as the game is going on, because before we started <laughs> playing, we were talking about, like, we need to roll boner checks more often, because we need to know what everyone's boner is doing at the starting yeah. point, and I'm glad Chris really confronted that criticism yeah, head it's, on. It's the, he, took, he took the creative... <laughs> this he is why it. you're a really good GM. Joe's growth. <laughs> Joe's growth. He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> Adapting. <laughs> Sebastian, you're up. All right. Uh, how close? It's really I get? tight over there. Go ahead and make a size check. Ooh, I am small, so this is bad, I guess. Yep. I did. I did get it though. I got a 36 out of 45. So great. Pass. You, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, the the bodies and the amount of people are so thick. It's like a solid wall of flesh, and you manage to just kind of muscle, throw a few elbows, kind of climb your way over people. And you stand there face to face, shoulder to shoulder with Dr. Burgess. No one has touched Dr. Berger. And in fact, he stands there with the knife. And you could tell your uncle has been inflicted with wounds. And, and even though he hasn't been touched, there are other people around him. And they're gnawing on him. They're punching him as he lies there. Dr. Berger is just making small little cuts, rune shaped in a language you don't know, along your uncle's chest. So my uncle is on the sacrificial altar, then. He is. Definitely. Murphy, you're up. Uh, I'll run up to get next to him. That's Make a size check. Also, these are the dice that I got with the Call of Cthulhu starter set, and they're just bullshit dice, but they've been rocking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get Oh, 15 out of... Did you pass? Yeah, yeah. Same thing. You, you shove in a couple elbows. You know how to maneuver around people that are fighting, so you kind of get climb and squeeze your way through and you stand shoulder to shoulder with Sebastian. Sebastian, I, I, I Dr. Burge is just said, ignoring you. I'm gonna hit him. I just leap into the air with the crowbar and I try to 
just pound on him with it. Roll a fighting brawl. Shit. Are you sure? <laughs> Positive. What about the library of the crowbar? Let me use my library use. 67 out of 25, so I definitely didn't get it. Uh, he steps aside, but you do manage him in the arm. Takes one point of physical harm. And at least I kind of stopped him from carving into my uncle. Yep. Uh, you've come because you want to meet her. Don't worry. She'll be here soon. She'll be glad you're here. Well, you can tell he's... her goodbye yourself then. <laughs> and he's going to swing his knife at you. Oh, fuck, that's way sharper. <laughs> Mine's got a it, guy it is on it. Ah, <laughs> uh, he rolled a 60. He did not test. Oh, thank God. So you man, you man should, in panic, deflect it with your bifocals. <laughs> Lucky bifocals. Murphy, you're up. Yeah, I'm just gonna just lay into him. Just flurry of blows. Doctor Fury blows. Get out of here. <laughs> my old my Fury swipes. Pokemon. And Pepper breath. <laughs> There we go. All right, what you got? Fighting brawl. Uh, forty-four. That's hot. I have a ninety. Yeah. Yep. Roll for damage. Seven damage. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Doctor Berger! All his teeth are knocked out as he smiles at you. Blood dripping from his head. His eyebrows all swollen. He's barely, barely standing. What else do you do, Sebastian? Well, if I see that Murph seems to have Dr. Berger on the ropes, ha, ah, boxing. Um, <laughs> like, uh, so I'm going to turn to my uncle and try to just, like, grab him and take him off the, the altar. Make a dexterity check to right. take off his bindings at half. Because you know what? You hurt your right hand earlier. I did. My dominant hand is hurt. 27. I'm going to spend the luck to get that, which will put me at 20. Great. So you manage, you, you kind of grit through the pain as your right hand doesn't function as well as it usually does, but you manage to undo the bindings and he gets up and he is messed up. Larry, we're going to get you out of here. He looks terrible. Uh, Dr. Berger looks like he's on death's door, but uh, your uncle looks like he's the next door neighbor. <laughs> What it say? Let me say that much. Can I, uh, I guess, using just adrenaline? Am I able? Am I like, is he like thin or anything? Is he okay for me to carry him, like army style, on my shoulder? Uh, you can't carry. Well, I'll make a power check. Yeah, yeah. let's see. Oh no, no, uh, a oh, size okay. check. Size. No strength, strength. Okay. That's better. Much better. <laughs> uh, I like how, um, as you were picking, the number got lower and lower. <laughs> Make a power Sorry. check. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. No, like, size. Wait, no. Oh, that's like, 45. No, oh, straight. 30. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly not so confident. I got a 72, so I didn't do that. I guess he just falls on me as I try to... Uh, twinge your back a little bit, trying to pick him up. Ah. Yeah. Ooh. That's going to hurt in the morning. Uh, you decide it's best just to have him rest upon your shoulder and try and walk through. But that's it for your turn. Murphy, you're up. I'm going to just keep working, working the body, throwing in some hooks, some uh, jabs. Mm, go, go ahead and roll fighting brawl. Okay, that is a that is a one. A uh, critical success. Yes. You punch his head clean off. <laughs> then you, you, land, you land an uppercut and it literally lifts him off the ground. Here. <gasps> She's here. And you literally see him die in the air before he hits the ground. Dude. You know the right shot. And that's the end of your turn. Damn. What you didn't notice is those ripples kept growing in succession as time passed. Slow. Then faster. Then faster. And then, from the Wezevrar, rises that giant toad snake with 20 eyes. You've indeed seen, but out of those 20 eyes, two of them glow bright white. And you just see it breathing in. Yeah. Go ahead and both make a sanity check. Yeah. <laughs> this, is fine. this is fine. This is fine. We can explain this. Uh, I got a 73, which means I super... Well, I just fail because there's... I would have succeeded in the beginning. I got a 61. 
<laughs> you failed too. Yeah. You both take six sanity damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. That tracks. Getting low. Getting pretty sun, low on the sun's sanity. Sun's getting real low, champ. <laughs> <laughs> I think I lost See, half of my sanity this game. Well, close. The giant head sways toward your direction. Bird. You've disappointed. You feel the air grow cold. And it begins to hum. And it's your turn. I'm going to run back from where we came. Good. Go ahead and start off by making a luck roll. <laughs> That number's getting pretty low, too. <laughs> 21! Yeah! I got 33, so I passed. Are you... Uh, people are still fighting in XD, and, uh, but you manage just out of just a shot. You see one guy take a shot to the head, and you manage to squeeze through and get a pretty good distance towards where you're running. Uh, just towards the gap in the fence that we made. Okay. Good. Murphy! Go ahead and make a constitution check at a quarter. Oh, no. If it's a quarter, either way, it doesn't pass. Yeah, doesn't pass. Yeah, it doesn't pass. You lock eyes with the creature. You're not sure which eye it's looking at or which eye you're looking as well. And you feel a stirring along the side of your head. You feel a slither. You feel excitement. And your right eye explodes. As this huge worm flies out of it towards, you take six physical harm. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, looking great. I'm probably falling to my knees of blood everywhere. Can I dramatically As it flies turn around? <laughs> she says, Come, my child. Come. And the giant worm with maybe 20 tiny eyes. Starts to work its way towards the reservoir. And you've lost all their action for this turn. Fair. Sebastian, you're up. I, I turn around because I, I thought I heard Murphy, but it, be, due to the chaos, I can't tell. So I'm just going to keep moving forward, uh, hoping that he's and behind me. The thrumming in the air has grown more intense. The air seems not... It seems cold, it seems frozen, almost still with time. Keep going. I, I have. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Make a strength check. Yeah. Eighty-eight. So I failed hard. You go to run through, and Frank stands right before you. Oh, he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Roll dodge. Oh fuck. <laughs> Yay! I barely passed. I got a forty-eight out of fifty. Great. His giant fist flies towards you, you have an opportunity to move one of you out of the way. Who's going to take the shot? You or your uncle? Uh, it's going to be me. It's going to be you. It's going to be me. Oh. You take two physical harm. He hits you. His, his fist is almost the size of the side of your head. Oh. And he hits you square on the side of the head and it almost thro it throws you and your uncle into a person not far away from you, Ooh, but at geez. least it's out of at least it's out of Hank's way. It's good. It's always good. Murphy, you're up. Go uh, ahead and make it. Make a Constitution yeah. check for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a ninety-four. <laughs> the pain bad. is so intense, you can't stand up. As with your left eye, all you see is a trail of blood leaving your head and falling. Around. You're up, uh, Sebastian. I'm getting, I'm, I'm <laughs> getting into the zone. Uh, I'm gonna try and pick up my uh, uncle again uh, and see if I have an opening to run past. Make another strength check. Oh god, thirty-five. I'm gonna spend the luck because my uh, strength is thirty. Great. You see, you see Hank start to watch, walk towards you, because he's he's hungry for blood. And then right as he's about to 
way into you. A little tiny, tiny little one jumps up and like latches onto his neck with the teeth. Hank starts to like a big oaf, just run run around, arms just flailing. He's knocking people was out it, of your way. Was it finger in the butthole guy? Uh, no, oh. no, no. I miss him. <laughs> and I miss him. You like him, huh? <laughs> and you make it almost all the way to the fence. Yes. Sebastian, you're there. Murphy, make a constitution check. Okay, that's 27. That passed. You can stand and you can manage the pain. Go ahead and make a luck roll. Nope. Nope, nope. Can't even spend it. Nope. 48. Great. 48. You don't see a way out. There's so many bodies. You're just going to try and wait and make your move. Both of you make a power check for me. 48. Got it. 17. Got it. The vibration in the air has grown more and more intense and somehow more and more still. You feel like somehow that you're standing in stone. The air has grown so hard. Sebastian, what do you do? You have uh, one action to do. Uh, you don't even have to make any checks. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm just going to get out through the fence and just keep running towards the car. Not not thinking. I am uh, I think I've technically had a mental break according to the game mechanics, and I'm just going to say that my mental break is tunnel vision. I'm just running and not thinking about anything. I don't even know if my uncle's alive. Like, I haven't checked to see if he died on my shoulder or anything like that. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm yep. just going. I need to get out of here. I need to flee. I need to be gone. I don't know what happened to Murphy. Don't know what's going on with my uncle, but I, I just know that I have him here, and I'm going. <laughs> well, so you make it out. And you make it all the way to the car, and you're kind of in the forest, and you're just puffing, puffing, running, running, running <laughs> I wave to Luna <laughs> Murphy go ahead and make an intelligence roll that's 22 passes you look around the feeling in the air you realize you're not going to make it out of here you're trapped and something's about to happen you turn and look to the giant toad snake of many eyes that towers above everybody else. And she says, Thank you for my baby. Unfortunately, I do not accept failure. And you feel a thrum in the air and you hear a Boom, as a shockwave goes through your entire body. And you could feel from your mouth to your anus, your body is turned inside out. Mm. As you both, as everyone there takes 94 points force damage. <laughs> That's a lot. I'm at a, I'm at a hot negative 91. <laughs> you can make it, Murphy! I need a healing potion, and I'll be... Go right as rain. Make your death save. <laughs> It'll be fine. Murphy, no. And reaches all the way to the fence. Go ahead and make a spot hidden check for me, Sebastian. I was about to say who, but... <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, make make that, or, or listen check. You have a choice. Uh... I'll make a spot hidden, because where's my listen at, actually? Yeah, I'm going to make a spot hidden. Uh, 54. I'm going to spend the luck and actually get that. There you go. I have, like, no luck anymore, but that's fine. From the car, you see the reflection on the windshield, this bright light, and you turn to face it, and you see coming down, just from out of nowhere, straight down, and it looks like a spinning top. Someone grabbed the top of it and spun, and there's this long, long twirl that reaches all the way to the fence. Then you hear, poof, and it disappears. Any motion, commotion that you heard before ceased. All the torches have been blown out, complete in utter darkness. Uh, I put my uncle in the seat, in the, in the passenger seat, the front passenger seat. And then I just kind of yell into the forest, Murphy! 
Murph! <laughs> and I, I stand there for what seems like a really long time, but due to my adrenaline was actually maybe only five minutes. Um, but I feel like I need to leave. Uh, and that hopefully Murphy will be able to find a way out or I could come back for him later. I'm not thinking completely straight. Um, and uh, I yell one more time for Murphy and then I run into the car and I shut the door behind me and I start driving it down and then I finally check on my uncle like just uh, Uncle, Uncle Larry! Uncle Larry, are you okay? He's breathing. I'm here. Drive! Okay, okay, Drive. we're gonna get you to the next hospital in the next town over. Great! Uh, I guess we just drive, and I, d I don't think about anything. Um, like, I, I, I just focus on the road the whole way. Uh, we just drive out of town. Yeah, my uncle can't really talk, because he's basically half at death's door, so... And I don't know what happened to Murphy, and I don't want to think about what happened to Murphy. The night closes. The next day, you're still at the hospital. Your uncle hooked up to IVs and recovering and resting. And you, as you sit in his room, a few towns over, you decided one town is still just too close for comfort as you drive almost halfway across uh, Massachusetts through the course of the night. You see a newspaper. And on the newspaper, there's a headline. The headline reads, Sinkhole kills hundreds at Danvers Lunatic Asylum. No sign of Dr. Berger. The phone rings. Oh, it's, uh, I, I guess I, I perk up and I, I go to pick it up. Hello? You hear a voice on the other end. Hello, my name is Ashcan Pete, and I'm with a particular organization that's interested in the happenings that you may have encountered last night. And we fade to black. Ooh. And that's the end of Danvers. The deadly days of Danvers. Ooh. Yeah, that was cool. That was a cool ending. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Dave Bruno. Um, I was playing Sebastian Goodsir. I think my favorite part of that, um, I can tell you what my least favorite part was. <laughs> Ty. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was. It was. Uh, does Luna? <laughs> does Luna ever come back to town? <laughs> Good old Luna. Who knows? She's in the forest right now. <laughs> no, I think uh, just uh, it was so good. I, I, I love that ending. That ending is great. That was such a cool, like, visual in my head, how that all turned out. So I, I want to say that might have actually been my favorite part. Um, but just there was so many, like, really great parts, especially in the beginning and stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't really pinpoint one, but I do want to say the ending was epic as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so throw it yeah, over. Yeah, Ty. Ty, go along. Uh, um, you didn't even catch I am, it. I'm... <laughs> it's made of smuckies. Oh man! Uh, I am Sai. Find me here and on Twitter at Ball and Brawler. I'm also on Dice Prayer and Variant Rolls and the Mythos Mystery Society. My favorite part of today it was Dave's was... least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that went so wrong. I love it. So wrong. I was just so like, wrong. wow, what a derailment. This, I guess I'm playing D and D again. <laughs> I was hoping, he, like, it was hoping it would go like, oh, I just break it and she gets scared, and it just went so much worse. It's really funny, but it went real bad. <laughs> How would you think that situation would happen? I, I mean, you just get scared and do it. It was an intimidation. I didn't think you would end with her in the woods, truly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really, that really got out of our hands. <laughs> situation really, got real. Bad. Really jumped the shark there a bit. <laughs> uh, I think my other favorite part would be the like, just the mystery of like being able, you know, even. If we didn't survive, at least we told, like, are we some, some some message to Armitage, like, hey, you should do this. Like, having that, like, still, because we kind of solve a mystery, having some sort of, like, solution from our investigation. Like, yeah. there was at least, it, there was a point to our investigation that did 
even if we didn't survive, had some bearing. Even if we didn't know it, at least we would have had that. Yeah, there could, I could easily imagine if we both died, there being an epilogue where the MMS comes in and actually plugs the hole. With like, yep, yeah. got, got that written too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was it for me. Uh, you can find me on Variant Rolls tomorrow for a, uh, a game called Monster Hearts. We'll be running it tomorrow <laughs> night at 5 p.m. Central. It's about monsters having sex. Out to you, Chris. You know, as you do. Yeah, just life. Just life. It's just your normal life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Chris. You can you can find me here on all, and on old episodes of Dragon Heights. I can't play anymore. No, just because of schedule. Very sad time. Watch our last episode with me on it though. You'll cry. Oh, good. Yeah, it's it's intense, Dave. It's yeah, really good. It's really good. I play. Yeah. That's a that's a group I played with for about two years. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not that game, but that group. Uh, yeah. about two years long. Yeah. Ah, uh, my favorite part of tonight. Gosh. Things started going south so fast. Um, <laughs> just like things, you know, it's my first time running this kind of game, and you just, you guys made some choices that I had to figure out. Like, okay, <laughs> yep, that's not good. What would happen in this situation? So it was really nice to kind of play that. Um, yeah, I, I like the ending too. The ending, I was, that, that's why I, I told you there was a complicated part. It was that, because I, I, it was combined with things I wrote and things that were in the book. So it was. Um, I was excited it, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, what's funny about the derailment scene is that I think I made up for all of it by just us ditching Luna and then Murph trying to justify it and just me the... just going, Murph, just stop talking. <laughs> that, like, made it all okay. <laughs> just like, this yeah. is the plan. It went super sour and we're both embarrassed <laughs> by it. <laughs> But yeah, alrighty, we've been the Mythos Mystery Society, uh, and we are signing off. <laughs>